not getting out of this, are we? We could. We're close. We're actually really close. Doesn't look like it, though. We've given over our power to everybody else. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed, this is Cricket Tude Busting episode BTWRLM415. That'll get you a number later in the future after we get the pod, pod broadcaster posted. Hopefully you can find the content, which I'm speaking to, which I will, usually don't read too much of. Might do a little bit more today, but not so much. It's really just the tabs, the content of the so-called news out there, the notice to you all, and me too, is is letting us know what's been going on for years and years and years. And the whole, the whole point and problem is the fact of the... Like, I don't know, we have other things to do in our life. We don't realize the threat when it comes on to us. Um, uh, and as I'm understanding, I have some low audio. Let me uh, do some adjustments here. Thank you. And this is a delay. The problem with the delay uh, with this is a delay that we have. And I can't get um, I can't get timely information back, but we do what we can here. And I just had an encoder drop for some reason. And so we'll continue. We just keep going here. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm making some adjustments here. Let me go back uh, to something else. And let's see if we continue to do what's going on. Is it still, can you hear that now? Testing one, two, three, or not? I'm not so sure if this is really working either. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Can you hear me now? One, two, three, four, I don't know. I can't tell. It's, uh, again, a delay. I made a switch, and I don't know if it's even getting through at this point. And this is the problem. So let me double check some things here before I get too wild. Overall volume is low. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't know what now to do. Yeah, okay. So um, you're hearing me, but I don't know what the volume is now, but I don't know how to check it for adequacy. Is it still too low or, or what? So it is clear, but you, lows are always lower than the highs. Yeah, okay, well, I'm afraid to touch too much, and I'm afraid to get it, by the time I get it back, uh, and I go, and I listen to the file, it, it becomes actually too much. So let me uh, maybe kick this up just a little bit here, just, just a bit. Okay, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to leave it right here, unless it's really bad. Yeah, so I got a couple of those uh, masters, uh, Grimner, that are all kind of working. This is the problem with all this. I really need to figure out how to clean this up a bit. But like I said, I had I did that update. It really messed things up, and I've been doing every just things to compensate. So if this is good enough, I think I'll continue. It allows me to get the file done later a lot quicker than to touch all these uh, adjustments too much if, if everything's okay here. I'm going to continue to move on unless someone tells me, no, don't, and then I will, we'll return to this. But I appreciate your patience here. But... Anyway, so we, uh, we have the ability to do some things, and it's very difficult, and the people that are oppressing us have been ingrained for a long time, and this is a part of, a part of the problem. We don't really know, like I've said, I was saying yesterday, people take ideas, and they, they think that one set of ideas works, and it works generally, and, and in fact, the they don't everything is really case by case and and I, I look into the into the past and looking forward again and looking what other people have done and all the trouble they got into and all the the I tried to analyze what people did in their minds about what they thought was supposed to happen and that's what we tend to do we tend to think we know what's going on we really don't have a clue with what I find to be I call it the occupation, but there's a number of them, and they somewhat interrelate. And if if they're not related, then they're very well interrelated and using each other. So there's another a, a potential problem. But if people would just stop trying to expect something from what they're seeing and realize there is a, the why they're having we're having problems is because there is someone actually people groups of people doing this, and stop using someone else's determinations for you and actually sit down a little bit and read a little bit and figure out how this thing works i think you'll, you'll be able to see that we are in a bit of a, a pickle here 
I really never liked pickles, so I, I guess I'm uh, kind of perpetually fighting after this. But the and a lot of people don't. I mean, I can see why people don't. It's a pain. It's not a good thing. But I see nothing but downturn, and you've been watching it ca- happen, that if we were to just step up and just find the objective basis, not what we think, like I was showing, explaining last week, Someone asks me about, they say they're not a taxpayer, and they're, they're sitting there complaining that the IRS just hit their pension because they asked for the COVID money. You can't get that money unless you're a taxpayer. So to continue to assert that you've been wronged when it was your request, you can't approach your problem that way. You just can't. I don't know what else to say about that. That's what I see lots of people doing. Lots of people will go approach a problem, and they will continue to set the opinion that this is how it's supposed to be. And I also, I have a, I can't relate. There were some nice questions in the chat, but I can't, because of the delay, I can't ask, I can't really respond to them. And I'll just tell you folks, if you've ever done, uh, done broadcast, if you've never done broadcasting, you may not appreciate how difficult it is to read something in a chat, try to make sense of it, try to figure out the context, try to see what, because it's usually never set up for anything. And then to try and make sense of it and answer. And I found out I was probably, I was more often than not, not really answering the questions. And so I decided not to even inter- interact. It just takes too much time. We don't have a live response. So though I see some things to answer, and a lot of the times I'll have to say, the questions are really malformed. They're made, the questions are made in the context of someone trying to impose what they think is supposed to happen, asking the question, and saying, well, isn't this, a, you know, I'm supposed to be protected about it, or I'm not supposed to be encroached upon. And everybody, it seems, does not understand. Everybody has done something to become suspect, if you will, to be subject. And the, you have to really be honest about how that all worked. And I found out when I did that, I was able to, oh, this is where I messed up. This is where I messed up. Let's get rid of that. Let's not do that no more. And so there, there's a way to start to approach this. And when I started to drop all that, presumption that I was okay, then you start to see the true fact of you're not supposed to be oppressed, and then you start identifying how, which I tell you is more important, not that you're being oppressed, but how you're being oppressed. And so I guess uh, I don't want to, I don't know what to say. I want to interact with people, but there's really no way to interact, and then people want to come to me and, and state certain things that may be true. They may ultimately, finally, they may be true, but not in the condition that we find ourselves. And I found that you have to break that through. And when I have, as I've explained, I don't. There's nothing I've told you in the, ever that's ever been uh, so esoteric that you couldn't understand what I'm telling you exactly what what I've done in particular things in order to stop particular things. And like I just responding, we had a, a federal agency for a service jump on us about our mining claim, lock our road out, and I told you what I did about it. We didn't get justice, but we got our road open. And so this is, the, I think, the best at this point we can do until most of us, most of you all, actually look at what the problem is and step up and do something. And I really still, I'm looking at it. This COVID-19 was just ripe for us to do that as a people. And then globally, it was really quite, quite amazing, actually. And then we didn't. And so I'm still here waiting. We're doing what we can. I mean, I can only do so much. And so and that's to offer, you know, what I can can, and hope that people pick up what I'm saying. And a lot of times it's a, people have the wrong idea. And I have to, it takes a lot of time to exp, try to show over time, re-educate what the situation is. And once people start to go to the black and white, and actually, the faster you go to the black and white and stop trying to interject your mind on what you think is entitled to you for the moment, you you come quicker to the point, and then you can go ahead and start to understand where you are relative to why you're not getting what you really ought to be entitled to. And a lot of this is not entitled to anything more than being left alone, and we're not. And then we're exploited against. And again, this COVID-19 nonsense, is fraud, is giving it to you in spades. And yet I hear, again, crickets. Now, in the process of all this over time, and I was a little bit remiss last week, I got I got into the fact of, again, people, it's not that you have your own ideas. That's important to have your own ideas. But when you find out that you might 
not be proper in what your idea is, or you find out that the basis for your idea needs at least a whole lot more support, if nothing else. It's not just what you say, but it's how it's interpreted and treated by those that you're going to end up having to go through to identify to be the criminal against you. And you have to have a better record as you go do that. And along the line of us telling you, us the broadcasters, that we will, that we as we have, uh, we lose a few. And last week I got into the discussing this real serious problem, current problem, about people coming with their own impressions about what they think they're doing, denying the truth, trying to assert rights and things. And forgot to mention something that's already happened here almost a month ago. Uh, we've lost another host, another guy out there in the world that would tell you certain things. And it got me to thinking about how much more time I've got here. But for me, I'm I'm still here. So, but uh, here I, I somehow I came across the idea in passing that uh, we've lost Alan Watt. And the first place I saw that somehow was at uh, RBN uh, broadcasting website. And it says former RBN host and researcher Alan Watt has passed away. And he passed away on March 4th as information came from their website. So I jumped from there into the uh, website actually to another story because I didn't understand if it was the same Alan Watt we might know who's been characterized as a conspiracy theorist and whatever all names they would have put on on somebody. And uh, I've, uh, the only way I know Alan Watt is because UCY TV, Jules would post Alan Watt's material in the same week when I was put, that she was gracious enough to post my stuff. And Alan always got a lot of listeners. And so I've, I was intrigued about it and I listened to what he had to say. And he had uh, the same type of information in my mind that someone like um, another guy we've lost, and this got me thinking about all this, uh, William Roberts, where he would tell you this thing that's around you, and everyone had their perspective, and everybody would explain, continue to explain the condition and get people to understand that there's that condition the best way they could. And a lot of people like to listen to that. And so we've lost, so we're losing the people that are telling you that there's a condition out there. But when I, my mind started going back, I, we, we have, um, you know, a, a someone else that, that died a long while back, uh, murdered in, in, the, in the streets, uh, in this, at his house. I mean, the name slips my mind right now. Hour of the time, I think was his broadcast. Yeah, I don't know the names here so much, but anyway, it just slipped my mind. Uh, all the thought I was doing on it this this last week, that there, the if you the people that are telling you certain things, whatever the the negative the, the the contrarians will tell you about it that you find favor in, those people are going to be going away, and in the scheme of things, uh, I I was wondering about about that. I'm wondering. If those are the messengers whose message is done and fate takes them so that we don't listen anymore uh, because there's nothing more to know that they could have told you. And I, anyway, so because when I look back on the, these people that are, were giving you the foundation for what is underlying some of this in all their different ways. To know that is not to stop that. And that's where, at some point, they've told you everything they can tell you about that thing. And then if you haven't picked it up and started to apply it yourself, you're getting behind it. Uh, William Cooper, I think that's his name. Uh, William Cooper, Bill Cooper, I, I, I think. I think I think he did Hour of the Time. He was one of those guys that came on right before 9/11, and he was telling us stuff. Now I didn't I didn't get into all of these uh, all of these people. I just I again appreciated William Roberts for what he did. We were on the same network. He got me into broadcasting. Uh, told me there was a place. He got me over to Oracle. Uh, we were consistent with our information. He would tell you the foundation, and then my position seemed to be to tell you what to do with it. How to go about it. And note, and again, not to do it with Jeopardy. So, anyway, Alan Watt has died. He would close his broadcast, May your God and your gods go with you. And, again, trying to be open for everybody. Explaining we're in a condition. 
Alan Watts, but Alan Watt is not Watts. It's Watt. I understand people kind of give him an S. He's not. He, that's another guy. Alan Watts is a different guy. Uh, that would come and, and give in his way and for hours the condition of the world as run by groups of people. And now his voice is not here as William Roberts is not there or William Cooper's voice is not here. And so th these voices will, will come and go, but they're going to go. And I'm looking at this where the voices that are going, you can keep replaying their stuff, but the more times you rest in what they were telling you, those people they were telling you, accurate, inaccurate, as far as exactly the people, the function of what those people have been telling you is moving ahead, far ahead of every moment you listen to everybody who's in the past talking of the condition, and you're not stepping forward to, to do something about it. And so, R.I.P. Alan Watt, I didn't hear about it till late. I uh, didn't hear it at all. I'm not connected that well to all this. But i just contemplating these people that were telling us things that I know people still listen to, and for good reason. It's not like we don't listen. We still need some guidance from people that were looking into it. But whatever the contrarians would do, would call them, you know, like cons they called Alan Watt a conspiracy theorist. At some point, you can't, you, you got to stop and say, well, at some point, those contrarians are throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Not everybody's 100% wrong. And yet, I looked at some of this stuff, and I, I don't know about Alan Watt. I never really listened to too much. When I found out his subject matter, and I was saying, okay, I already, I've already pretty well studied that. Those aren't important for me, not for what I do. Glad to have them there, but but for me, it was, okay, what are we going to do about all that you hear? And then I moved from trying to identify those people just to look and stop what they did, learn how to stop what they did, make them irrelevant. That listening to the fact that there's people out there coming by all these groups and classifications that you can point your finger at. Again, remember, there's three pointing back. When you're pointing to someone doing wrong and you're just standing there pointing and doing nothing, they're getting away with it continually. And they're obscured like I don't, I've never understood in all my life until being able to see this stuff now. And we're going to hear a little bit more when I get onto this. But uh, Alan Watt was someone who would tell you what was up. And what his research would show you, what most everybody who looks at it, other than the contrarians, would say was well researched, was the fact, was the truth. He, he had that presentation, it made it easy to listen to him. And uh, he had his ability to con make the continuum. Of, of the story, if you will, the ongoing over and over story. It wasn't really hard in a way to continue that because it's ongoing. It's not being stopped. And, and so in memory of Alan Watt, you got a link to through the Cutting Through the Matrix website themselves. They talk about his death there way back in March 4th, the beginning of the month. And we could, I could go through it, although most people who would listen to him or did listen to him, know about him. You know, so we can read read about that. So we've lost another, someone else, another witness to what's going on. And uh, at any rate, that's what's going to happen. There's, I don't hear that many people that would be in, in, the, in the type of information, not be so sensational, just try to lay it out for people and be there all the time to do it. I can at least know that much, seeing Alan Watt do that, or listening periodically. And there's not going to be, I don't know of many people that are out there that are doing that for everybody. And I'm wondering, as I said, is that time coming to an end? There's only a few people that I can tell that would be doing anything about that, that tell you about that. But they're if they're telling you about the condition and they're disappearing, there's no more, you're going to be looking in the past now over what they were telling you was coming on, on us and has. And now what, in a way, they have what they have to offer has been done. Their job is finished. And I don't know if this is the truth because there was no indication this guy should have been gone. Like all these people, there's really no indication they should be out of here. And yet they disappear from us. And so I look at this in a, in a way a little more solemn to me about the fact that 
But there's not very many more voices. And it's true that these voices that were witnesses are going away because what they have to say, you're beyond. You, the living, are beyond. And you better take a handle on two than we are truly in the di- in dire times. And so I just look at that responsibility. We just take this on. It's not even, a, I don't even know what to say. It's not even a choice. It's just the choice you make and it's where you go. That Looking at the people that told us and tell us about, or have told us, and they're to God that, about the condition. And as I've said, they don't, they would, in fact, Alan Watt, I've heard him specifically say he would not tell you what to do. It's completely, not, I think, it's completely different than what I'm here to suggest. And so as I look at, it, at this as a continuum, and the voices and the witnesses go away when they're done, when I'm not, they're not the man or the woman that are done. I'm talking about the, what they're saying, the content is done, it's past. And you better have taken that information and put it next in the application. If that observation came, which came to me to to think about, is true, we're in the time of your action, and your inaction is going to be your demise of everything those people told you about. What William Roberts explained to you, how it came about, that those people are still around, ancient groups are still around, still working and plying their trade and their deceit against you. Is not can't be something that I'm telling you what to do when I say do something, folks. Do something. And so, this is, I looked and said, well, if I'm one of the few, if any, I don't know how many people are out here, like I said, I don't get around, that are trying to get people to defend themselves. And in, I, ha, I do have to say it's in certain ways, because I mean, there's so many, there's only so many ways you can defend yourself when you're tied up, when you're hogtied. There's only so many things you can do. And so, you you can deny your hog type, but that's not going to save you and, so, and solve it. But you definitely have to work on the on the ropes that bind you, or you are hog type, and you're going to be that way. However, you sa- you try to satisfy your ego uh, uh, to the contrary. You can watch the world get locked down. It's pretty amazing. Last year, or this last year has been pretty amazing. But anyway, we lost Alan Watt. He won't be explaining that to us anymore. I look at this and say, wow, if this is, a, we're losing the people that are telling us the condition, we are down to the time of action. And that's where I'm sitting, sitting now. Almost like, I'm not going to say I'm taking any baton because they did their own thing. But I've been in here on my own doing my own thing without knowledge or integration with, with them and their work. That just the continuum tells me, folks, we're, we're really getting close to the inability, the future inability to deal with this stuff what we're watching and it's not really cool we're not not really cool at all i don't know what more to say about that anyway r.i.p alan watt i don't know what people are going to do without your voice if they have to continue to listen but uh, we do now not have that witness and i think it's time what we're going to have to move on against the real evil that's going on in the world not just that that we know about it how it's working against us and what are we going to do to stop it And along those lines, getting back into the current problem, uh, which is pervasive and I think completely, completely actionable in that it is completely based in fraud and quickly identified and how our societies all over the world, all of mankind can rise up here against the evidence that we are, but we can still rise up. I was sent a video by Gary L., and it was from suspicious, excuse me, a suspect guy, uh, and their and their their group of people, with a video that was titled "Is Bill Gates Internationally Immune from Prosecution?" What it is is a, a video of a conference call that Dr. Reiner Fulmich I've talked about of the German Corona Investigative Committee, uh, when they were holding a roundtable discussion, who was, and they were interviewing a WHO whistleblower. And the information that came out of that, and I think I think the information I could only find was that it happened actually in July of last year. And this was this whistleblower is explaining the function of her her here's a research function. She says that they were using, she was in the using poli, uh, science for politics. And so I went through listening to this this interview, and uh, just to me it's just water under the bridge for the knowledge of what I've been saying. It was confirmation if I needed more of how this thing works. More importantly to me, it was confirmation 
of what I've told you before. The laws and the rules are changed before we get to the problem. And then the administrators of the government dutifully execute those those violations, essentially, that the rules, not necessarily the law, uh, create. And I say it specifically to the rules because we caught that up in the fact of a reformation demand in an equity jurisdiction to reform a rule that was changed to allow foreign entities to be considered appropriate medical experts over your local uh, determinations. And, and that was identified in a, in a document, in a lawsuit, in a petition for a demand for equity to be done, to reform the rule, to remove it, to bring it back into the legislature's will that you have due process. And you have due process by the finding and determination that any one of you was the vector or susceptible to be the vector under the real standard. So I took special interest about what the researcher was saying, not just as a whistleblower, not like she's exposing something, but did I came my own path about this. I put out there is no test in March as a hashtag and started pushing that out, not be, just because it was there was no test, but because it, it subverted the uh, gov- government's abilities to get to maintain, hold, or acquire the police power. Moving into this where you now can hear it from somebody, I mean, disqualify whatever you've heard behind the woodshed is in here, except the the information which was not as actionable to me because we I couldn't really do anything about it, finding out the question that they say that Bill Gates and this group that he runs, this Gavi, has diplomatic immunity. Now, the problem I have with this is I couldn't find the proof, and this since this was done in July, it could also be that that, that proof has been now stripped uh, from the internet, so we've been, as I told Gary Ellen in the chat room, uh, chat room earlier, we've been mandalad, the mandala effect, because the internet's not permanent; it's changeable. You think it's permanent, you think it, it shows your memories and stuff, but it's actually there to change your mind. Uh, that we, I couldn't find that it actually has diplomatic immunity, although I don't, dis- I won't doubt it. I wanted to uh, caution people when I send this link out through the suspect Sci Bitshoot account. Listen for what you see, if you will. Those of you that are hot on this, track those those documents down. I'd like to see the proof that they have that this Gavi, which is instrumental in the implementation of this global vaccine, so-called it's a vaccine alliance, uh, that they have through Switzerland, another corrupt co- country, or that they have diplomatic immunity. Now, if you listen very carefully, it's only in Switzerland. And so the, this opens the door. Does he have? Does Bill Gates have international immunity? Well, I don't even know if we can quite get to Bill Gates being liable, but there could be felony arrest if you can make the connection better than some video on the Internet. If you want to go back through and find out how tangible is his influence and how they violated you locally, you could build, possibly, build the chain of evidence. And so here I'm talking again. I'm not telling you that they're out there. We can identify who's out there. We can know what their plan. We can get all, now get everything. All the documents I've told you are out there if you knew where to find them. To show a build, can we build the chain of, of evidence? That's what I'm asking us to do. Not know that they're out there, but what are we going to do to build the proper chain of evidence to criminal acts? The proper chain of evidence to find uh, official misconduct? The proper chain of evidence that shows that you can't get police power to lock you all down? Start becoming active and enforcing the law that's supposed to be instead of taking it and so part of me is i'm always excited to see the other people seeing it but uh, we there's some things that are qualifiers in this as well that really need to be done i just didn't have the time and i don't have the time to go and get all this but i so i've put together some links relative to the question and the idea what you hear in this in this interview that the who is a broker, as I've told you way back since pig fly flew. But they're a broker for pharma. You hear all about that. You hear that they make non-governmental agencies public-private partnerships to work and influence governments. Now, I want to know now, in these states that promulgated rules for allowing appropriate medical experts to be people, a uh, group, not people, the people in the organizations like the CDC or the WHO, when were those put in? And were they done after 2000 or after 2005 or 2009 or any other of the dates that you hear this researcher talking 
about these things. When were those rules promulgated to allow a foreigner to come and dictate to your local your local health official, and they could fought, they could hide underneath that cover, and you will start start building the evidence of the chain of evidence of the crime against you. Not just that it's happening, but how it happened. Now you have a cause. Whether that goes criminal, whether you start imposing things like you start working through the things that maybe Alfonso Fagiolo might try, again, from the beginning, not for an RS case after the fact, but ahead of time, and you start building your case, and you start pulling people together that can file all the records that you need to do all the regular, all the complaints that really do need to be made. I, I really, more I do, I've, do, I've been helping people and doing court cases we really need big crews of people to be able to hit all the avenues that are available to bring up, to show evidence and make complaint. First, show the evidence of the, of the, of the wrongdoing and then show that the system that's been built up around you will not respond uh, to do essentially what we heard in, in the Virginia and the sanctuary city condition that I told you should have been a constitutional condition, when they finally get the record from those active people that will make the massive record that show the people are now knowledgeable of not just that there's a problem, but who's who done it and how and how. And applied the intent and applied the other criminal aspects, knowledge, onto people. As a people, we'll be educated to not question and not worry about what's going to happen to me we'll be able to move a lot more forcefully in knowing what we know and identifying who the perpetrator is against our lives that are literally taking your rights away. This is not a question about what they're doing. They're taking away their rights away. They're taking away you as property. They're going to convert you into a property. And this is, we'll get to that. We're going to get to that here in a, in a moment. But I, again, this is, uh, is Bill Gates immune? Well, if you listen carefully, only where they're immune and the governments that have allowed it I couldn't see where there's any immunity in the United States of America. And this researcher makes a special note that there was only two countries that did not that put reservations to the International Health Authority provisions and rules, IHR. Remember, I talked about that months and months ago. And I told you about that exception, the United the Reserve, the United States Reserve. Interestingly, Iran was the other country that reserved against the general application of international control of health rules and administration. And what was that power? It was the, the power of, for the United States was the power of the construction of the Constitution, saying that local jurisdictions have the power and authority in health matters exclusively, and that the United States government acceded to that authority in their reservation in the IHR, which, which this researcher mentions as an, ex, as an exception. And if there's an exception, then they cannot make for America. I just want to point out, those of you that want to try and do something, it's all here to do if you just would. You just commit to go do it and lay it out. It may be a bit of a bit of work to pull it together, but it can be done. The, there is a pathway to get these people. If you were to just lay out what even the researcher says and prove it, don't just let it go. Because in the video, one of the attorneys that's listening to this, was saying, yeah, here it is. Gavi is international diplomatic immunity. They're an NGO and all this other stuff. I went to look. I couldn't find it. You have to find that. If it's not in the wiki that he says, you have to go find it in the inter in the national international documents, like go to Switzerland and track it down. I tried some quick checking. I couldn't find it. But this is a important work that some of you have to do to bring the fact to us, those of us in America, really anywhere, anywhere that's got the rule of law and democracy, to start to bring out and find the culprits that are that are actually influencing your local your local official. Now the local official will try to claim no duty at all to anything, and you're, you're going to have to work that out as as we are in in one case that this is a real problem. You start to identify who the occupiers are through this very quickly, and it's not a question. It's not what you think what you think you know. It's really what we can lay out as evidence that. And, and part of the problem here is whenever I heard the, the researchers say the the lawyers have to stop this, the lawyers are the only ones that can stop this. I, and then their response was, we will, we will. I had to laugh. I mean, this is supposed to be back in July, so when are they going to stop this? In fact, these may be good lawyers. These may be good people. I hope they're not a cover. And I always throw that out. They may be a cover. 
to keep everybody's feet planted on the ground, thinking someone else is going to do it for them. But these may be good lawyers that are working and trying to stop a problem. They don't realize, like like lots of people may continue to question, that there's criminals in the official system that can't shouldn't be trusted. They shouldn't be handed the amount of power they've been given without question. But good lawyers, looking at the problem now, a year later even so, aren't acting because the system inside won't allow it to act. The system inside is the perpetrator. The researcher believes the the lawyers are the only ones to stop it, don't realize that the people that she's talking to may be good folks that don't understand they've been dealing in a system that was set up to destroy you all. And it's not, and I'm learning, this is, I guess the thing, the projects I've been involved in lately, it's learning how to quickly get to all that and be able to show objectively, not because I've been feeling I, I've suffered injustice, show how that you've suffered the injustice, not on what you say, but some other old dude said, or some objective black and white basis said, that the other side said that they would follow. That's how you start to make this record. You start to educate people, hopefully. But, but like I said, we're a lot of people. The global people, all of it, everybody seems to be the same no matter what your rights are. You're going to give them up. One, I didn't touch on something last week at the end. You're going to give up your inheritance for that bowl of pottage, that mess of pottage. And yet, yeah, so I said it, I won't get to it, but this is what we do as people. That, that's in us. That's our, one of our fallen natures. It takes a lot to step up. But here's interesting is Bill Gates internationally immune from prosecution. Listen very carefully. I'll tell you he's not. You can't just point your finger at him. And I wanted to know, once you do the connection of the criminal connection, anybody have access to him in the United States? I wonder if you'll do a felony arrest once you get it down, once you figure out how to get him. Because I think all these people need to be challenged uh, because the government attorneys and the attorneys that look like they're part of a government agency that are actually part of a private guild are not going to. In fact, back in July, they were having this this interview, and we're still, now, I get, to his credit, he's I haven't read it, but uh, he's, Dr. Reiner Fulmich has created a, a lawsuit. Whether or not it goes after Gavi and Bill Gates and, and their immunity and that, that illicit compact with an NGO. And remember, I'm not too far from saying, remember, if you go to Title 42, Section 1981, written way long ago, they put in there that NGOs could not remove your right to be have exactions against every kind against you. Look at C underneath the listing you'll find at Title 42, Section 1981. It's, it's mentioned. And so... Again, this is all a continuum to me, and I've been trying to show you that it is a continuum. It's not just that there's people out there doing these dastardly deeds. It's how they're doing it and what we might be able to do. And so I put together some information, if you would like, that I tried to find this statement that to prove that Gavi and Bill Gates and all these folks that are involved have a, agreed with the Switzerland government to qualified immunity because they're recognized in an, as an international organization. Bill Gates actually tried to be a, a single-man country. Talk about the mind of this guy, the arrogance. I, I guess great for the attempt, but he was turned down by this group. But that would be interesting that he even tried. This, these people are so, I don't even know what you, I don't have the words of how these people are. They're just so evil in their own thoughts about their power, about their abilities in the world. And don't have to ask you, first of all, and then all the people that come around them to give them funding, which you'll find out. Who is supporting all this is astonishing. When you, when I tell you you're surrounded and don't, you're already surrounded, your second amendment is not going to help you on this. Maybe this little group of stories right here will show you. Who insider blows the whistle on total immunity of Bill Gates through GAV, G-A-V-I, from five minutes in, a bit of the transcript so you can read it. It's where I want you to then go down and look and see what the researcher is saying. And I forget what her name was. Uh, darn it. Oh, it's Ast Dr. Astrid Duckelberger as a health scientist. And uh, she's been involved with the European Union and the international health regulation. She mentions everything I've told you behind the woodshed months and months ago about how the inter inter interaction is and that she understood of documents that proves all this. You're going to have to go back and do that. 
Because what this, why it's important is because that is who's in, in, improperly influencing your local jurisdictions who have been given license to the rule, not the law that the legislature said to protect you, but they've made the promulgated a rule that is not within the purpose and intent of the legislature to protect you. That's what the reformation demand in an equity, cha- in a chancery case jurisdiction was about. When I, lo- when I located that, I remember I've told you, how did I see that? How did I even know where to go look? Is because of the savings clauses and the things that you know should happen, and you're looking for all the incidences and evidences in the rules where they stopped happening. It's how I analyze the mining law and the and the property and the grants and how to cleave the property and the rights from the regulation side. And when they when the intent of the of the legislatures were to protect you through a certain communicable disease processing, and the rule shows up which is supposed to implement that totally divorce the local uh, uh, officials of any li- of any responsibility that was a breach to what the purpose and intent was and so i found it by reading quickly through the rules you can too it's just a mindset you're looking for certain things like i said some of this is it takes a lot to explain but it's not that hard once you get your mind straight, stop arguing with your mind and in yourself and how much you're being violated, how much screwed up the world is. You're being attacked through that because you're not responding and understanding it correctly. Yes, all that's true, but saying it and clenching your fist and stomping your feet or whatever it is you do or in the chat room, that's not going to stop this thing. You're going to hear how it's not going to stop this thing. Maybe you won't want to listen to the video, how integrated this is. And again, you, except for questioning Bill Gates's immunity and that he has international diplomacy, I haven't talked about that. It hasn't been a focus for me until he, he I can put the, the two and two together locally, the chain of evidence locally. He's irrelevant to me. And I told you, that's another way to focus my attention. But now that we have it in front of us, if you want to know the scope of how this thing is planned before you get there, I'm going to show you I've been talking about it. This is an international imposition, even upon the United States, notwithstanding a reservation. And they went to COVID as planned, and you went to crickets as we were talking. I was hoping, beyond hope, we wouldn't, and we have. Here's the text that should start you to understand how one group, one group, and a bunch of people coming around it, lots of money coming into this thing, is what you're up against. And so I have a, I went quickly to go research Gavi on the Wikipedia, which is referenced by one of the attorneys. I couldn't find the immunity clause. I did find on the Gavi or, uh, or dot org site, uh, G-A-V-I recognized as international institution by Switzerland. They made agreements. Apparently they're tax agreements as well. Listen very carefully to that connection. And so they're, um, they're considered an NGO and an international institution. And their board has been given somewhat of an immunity. They show in this, the only place I could find the immunity is that uh, they stay here when they discuss the the organization. But the the Geneva-based Gavi Alliance enjoys privileges and immunities similar to those enjoyed by other intergovernmental organizations in Switzerland. That could be better or not as good, but I suspect it's better uh, uh, immunities. But I don't know the type of immunities. And so you'd have to find that, absolutely track that down to find out, do you think a private organization can actually give itself immunity, diplomatic immunity, or being with, without, without being part of the government there as well? What is that public-private partnership they all applaud and embrace? See, it's all that mechanism. In fact, I think it's a full, full, full much that says that he understood about public-private partnership, didn't understand what they did like this. And I've been telling you this since the, the pig fly flew when I first started broadcasting. This is what William Roberts would tell you about. You know, this is all the public-private partnership nonsense uh, that they work through. It doesn't stop. And there's people in government that allow it and accept it. And so we have the only thing I could find for immunities was a general privileges and immunities that states it's similar to intergovernmental organizations. I didn't know that was diplomatic. So that's my question. Someone would should follow up on that. The who whistleblower is a, a blowing the whistle on Bill Gates and Gavi. And this came from a reproduction of a statement from Dr. Joseph Mercola. I don't necessarily embrace what Dr. Mercola does. I guess we got different views on how you, I don't promote much. I don't sell anything. I don't do any of that. And he tends to do, to, to do that. He, he has made a comment here, which I did not appreciate a little bit because 
he it's again the sensational side it's why i don't really like the health ranger they sensationalize things that are so important not to sensationalize and as you're reading through here he talks about full talks about responding to writing to this video this interview and says that somewhere he says that they have full immunity that's not stated i don't think anywhere in that video and so I hesitate to give you this, but this is the one that was speaking. Dr. McCullough was speaking to this, and in the, this uh, this presentation at Electo Elective Veno Den Uno website, I cannibalize that bad, but they show also links to support the text, and this is what caught my mind. I went right down to where they talked about the immunity. They give a link. It sends you over to another link, and there is no proof by that link that they have diplomatic immunity. You have to understand diplomatic immunity. This is a powerful, powerful thing. And so this is, I guess the point is, understand what works in the world to protect itself. The evil that works to protect itself. And so as long as we stay silent on all this, it's not just that we know this is happening. We're going to have to find out whether or not it affects us locally, how it affects us locally, and then move to stop it. And this is just one of just many, many, many ways they come and destroy our lives. They've they've figured us out, folks. They have figured you out. And, and, and this okay, I'm not going to say because it it'll it'll freak people. I mean, people just start getting lost in the words instead of understanding the concepting. But they figured out how to do this. And I I told you that was pretty much you could see that in 2008 with the financial destruction. They now can monetize fraud, and no one said much. Okay, so. Uh, anyway, the, the, so here's a, a re, reproduction with links to the, I couldn't find them anywhere else, to the um, footnote support. And you have to go to the one that talks about the immunities, and you'll read carefully to find that there is no proof of that statement. Not only of not full immunity, but complete full immunity, or neither qualified diplomatic immunity. And so we got to be very careful in how we jump from the information on the Internet and actually apply it then is it applicable? Sometimes it's just knowledge that we have. We just hold it aside, and it just sits there to fortify that we've gone through the research, and we know where that goes, and we know how that works, And but but it doesn't make, it's not relevant to what we're doing. The USN Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, if you go through the Kaiser Foundation families of groups or whatever this uh, company is, it's one of the players, one of the big players that uh, is involved in the health care and in real estate and all that thing, and they'll go through and explain all the key facts for the Gavi situation that was written in June of '03, right before this interview. And it's fascinating. You need to go through. You need to read it. You need to see how well the United States government is funding and the primary funder in many ways of funding, the primary funder of this Gavi organization to promote what the, the hell you're living and the acquisition and dis, dis, deployment of vaccines, these novel profit-making vaccine so-called, the, the lie, the fraud on their face. And we're going to get to that as well. Not even new information. Again, this is just older stuff. I want people to understand, again, the information is there. If we knew where to look, are we going to do something with it? Or are we just going to be complainers? As long as you're just a complainer, I don't know how else to tell you. This is not going well to the future. And I'm some of us that don't have kids, I don't even know why we care, but I do. Somehow there's just something wrong with watching this thing come down without talking without being the witness on the gate. The voice to say, hey, this is what I see, and this is what, what we're going to have to do as it comes on us, or here, they're in the gates. It's hand-to-hand -hand now, folks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that one. But hey, this, this uh, KFF website I have, it just goes through and details everything about this Gavi and the U.S. involvement. So here's the point about Gavi. And here's the part of the United States government. It's already embraced by the federal government. It's what all this Operation Warp Speed, the military gets involved. You look at all the inter integration that's in here that I've mentioned over and over again. But, again, for me, it's confirmation by way of a different path. I came to the same, sinking abyss, same stinking abyss and didn't go down this path. And I still came to the stinking abyss. Here's corollary collateral proof for anybody that's interested on how they're doing it, not that they're doing what they're doing. But moving into what they're doing, and the question, which is not a question anymore, we've talked about it. But, but, and this was brought to me, thank you, Montreal, and then uh, fortified with um, 
uh, Moose Girl and uh, with Grimner's broadcast, and I didn't use those links. I went on to some other links that I think Montreal gave me about what this Moderna thing is. I wanted to bring this together, even though I think Moose Girl and Grimner did on their broadcast. The information on this, Montreal also knew, came and brought it in about what this Moderna thing, I want people to hear. Again, we're talking about proprietary brokerage on an international level that all these corporations are involved in. And of all the corporations that are anything are involved to to your demise, their profit. And so we can't expect that you're going to see here anything else but the promotion. Everything becomes this promotion. Bill Gates, you got to be careful, Bill Gates may just be the front snake oil salesman, even though he's a so-called the philanthropist, and they hide underneath these these costumes. See, this is you got to break this down. You really have to break in. These are all color, uh, colors of a, of immunity, colors of authority, colors of of charity that are only the color, mere color, and used to cover an evil. And you're going to have to break that down. You just don't say it. You have to be able to show it. It's a little bit more work than just saying, "Oh, he's evil." But he might just be a, a mouth man, notwithstanding his philanthropy, his money, his investments. That would be how you get him on the racketeering or collusion side. He might just be a, a mouth man, just a, just a front man, a promoter. Okay, and he, that, that's what they do. That's what a that's what a salesman would do. And yet he's also involved in software. He would recognize this. And I see uh, now a link. I want to re- tell you just to you you have to read this stuff. It's just like everyone I sees this discussion, they just can't get. I don't know what this. I don't even know what to say about it. They're all shocked. It it's what they're trying to do with this is is. Well, they said transforming, right? It's all about transformation. And this one, in this case, transforming the body. And it's in the, it's in the, the official, not, it's them, the people that are doing its own words. This is the most powerful confessions you can find. But Bloomberg reports, Moderna wants to transform the body into vaccine-making machine. Now, they're not telling much, many people that, but this, and I've talked about all this. So it's just, we find it in a, in a listing now today, now that they're pushing it, now that they're talking about going to Kobe passes and all this other stuff and mandatory this and mandatory that, I think, was it Rutgers? I just heard it's ma- making it mandatory to go to call university. You're going to have to get this shot. An experimental transformation treatment. Now, I don't know why all those people just don't walk away from that university. Where are the attorneys there? Where's the ACLU to stop this? No, they don't exist, and people are are senseless. They have no sense anymore. But you want to go to Rutgers, you're going to have to get the, this vaccine shot, which is once to, designed to transform the body into a vaccine-making machine. And that's if you agree this can be done and for your own good, and that what are they going to do with it, to start taking your blood to get it back? What is this real process they're talking about? But here it is, Bloomberg telling you, the U.S. company and its German rival BioNTech plan to use RNA as a messenger inside cells to produce an immune reaction. The advance could upend vaccine development long after the pandemic. This was the promotion that I talked to you about months and months and months ago. I want to bring it back together. What's Gavi actually promoting? Business of doing business. The who are brokers of, of Harma? Silent P's here. Harma, Pfizer. Now the PEF, uh, PFI, Pfizer is a silent P. So this is Harma and the pharmacological treatments that they want to put on you. What do they do? mRNA platform, enabling drug discovery and development is the title. But what they talked about in their headline was our operating system relative to their mRNA science. And what this transformation of your body into a vaccine, which we know it isn't, it's not a vaccine. They could change the definition, but it's not a vaccine. It's not. It doesn't immunize you either. In fact, it makes you a spreader. Now the new rules, your CDC that has no real authorities coming out to tell you, you have limited freedoms now. Those of you that get the shots, the second shot, you can commingle among, amongst yourself. You're the special kids. And we're going to keep track of all that. And it's coming down, folks. I don't know what to say. And I don't know what we're going to do. People are going to be being quiet. This is going to be more and more difficult. Our operating system coming right out of Moderna's Website Recognizing the broad potential of mRNA science, we set out to create an mRNA technology platform that functions very much like an operating system on a computer. I don't know about you uh, folks at uh, in Bill, uh, Windows and Bill Gates' little invention, but it needs an awful lot of updates to keep it running, and it's hackable, isn't it? 
That's not something that I want to see coming out the gate. But they're admitting this is like an operating system on a computer. This is for your cells now. It's a biological compu uh, software. It is designed so that it can plug and play interchangeably with different programs. In our case, the, quote, program or, quote, app is our mRNA drug. They didn't say vaccine there, did they? No. The unique mRNA sequence that codes for a protein. Unique? How about novel? How about proprietary? How about we made it up? How about it's synthetic? How about it doesn't exist in nature? How about we own you once we get it in you? We have a dedicated team of several hundred scientists and engineers solely focused on advancing Moderna's platform technology. The salesmen, folks. They are organized around key disciplines to work in an integrated fashion and advance knowledge surrounding mRNA science and solve the challenges that are unique to mRNA drug development. Did they say they solved them, folks? No. Some of the disciplines include mRNA biology, chemistry, formulation, and delivery, bioinformatics, we've talked about here over and over again, and protein engineering. Protein engineering. Our mRNA vax medicines, medicines, the software of life. This is their phraseology, folks. I'm not getting this anywhere else. It's not some conspiracy theorist. This is not someone, some conspiracy theory website. This is not even a doctor trying to promote his wares to more holistic living. No, this is from Moderna, the, the software of life. This is what Bill Gates and Gavi and Switzerland and the who and the broker for Harma are doing. They're imposing the software of life, proprietary novel. Now they use the word unique, all these words they can use to get around your perception of what it all really is, a synthetic created, fabricated treatment for a synthetic, fabricated ill that they got everyone to believe. Then generally, the only thing that changes from one potential mRNA medicine to another is the coding region. The actual genetic code that instructs ribosomes to make protein. Make protein. You need to search this stuff down, folks. This is terrifying. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Clint Richardson comes to mind here, for those of you that are into listening. Utilizing these instruction sets give our investigational mRNA medicines a software-like quality. A software-like quality. Software-like. Okay, it's biological. Not quite digits and electrons, right? We also have the ability to combine different mRNA sequence, sequences encoding for different proteins, different proteins like the spike in a single MR, mRNA investigational medicine. We are leveraging. Hear are these words, folks. You've been hearing the sustainable development all through this. I hope you picked that up as well. We are leveraging sustainable development. Why does it go there? Why? Because... They're talking about genetic code uh, manipulation. Why is that? Because that's your GMOs. That's in the biodiversity uh, convention. That that was going to be allowed, and it was going to be shared. 1992. We are leveraging. What are I talking about? Leverage funding. Leverage capacity. Leverage. Fulcrum, leverage. It takes a long bar and a small, close fulcrum to move the earth. Remember? They're moving the earth. The populations of the earth are moved with a few groups on the fulcrum of your fear. You got that? Are you listening, folks? They've got physics going here. It's all natural. We are leveraging the flexibility afforded by our platform and the fundamental role of MRI planes in protein synthesis to pursue mRNA medicines for a broad spectrum of diseases. What do I say, folks? <laughs> I could go on reading and reading. When do I have to stop? They, 
tell you everything that they're doing is not normal, not natural. It's synthesized. This is not something that just can't, this is not the common cold. That's a cover. One more thing here, overcoming key challenges. That's actually you. You're the key challenge because you have the final say, whether they want to tell you that or not, how much mandatory vaccine they want to put you on, how much you want to go to Rutgers College more than you want your life in the future. Using mRNA to create medicines is a complex undertaking and requires overcoming novel scientific and technical challenges. Yeah, they're inventing them. They're novel. They're invented. And that means they also have to overcome, and they haven't overcome. If you read that sentence, you understand you're the guinea pig. I wish people would get this. Now, i got to say something because it's going coming around again. There's real colds out there, folks. There's real serious flu. There's some word going around that there's some flu going on. Everyone's worried about COVID. Folks, don't focus on what COVID. That's just AIDS symptoms, okay? They're just trying to give you AIDS symptoms. Look very carefully at what you're sick with, not COVID. Forget COVID. Identify what it is because you want to know that to get to the underlying cause. As a friend of mine had serious allergies, serious enough to have to go to the hospital. Luckily, not misdiagnosed as COVID. It could be an underlying problem you need to solve quick. That If it's covered over by COVID, you won't treat correctly. So don't forget there's a real world going on underneath there. But getting back to this. These folks, these fraudsters, we need to get the mRNA into a targeted tissue and cells while invading the immune system. The, if the immune system is triggered, the resultant response may limit protein production and thus limit the therapeutic benefit of mRNA medicines. They're also talking about the fact that your body can interfere with this and that if they go through an oral route or they go through the mucus route, it, your body can learn before the insult, how to fight it. That's their fear. They can't let your body see it from its normal response. Your body can fight it. If they inject it, your body has no, no defense, initial defense against it. We also need ribosomes to think the mRNA was produced naturally. Deceit here, folks. So they can actually read the instructions, the software of life, transforming your body to whatever they say it's vaccine to what is we is the point we also find out that they target your electrical system your nerve system read the uh, they accurately read the instructions to produce the right protein we needed to do that but we don't have proof because of all the complexities that it can do that folks that's what they're saying here and we need to ensure the cells express enough of the protein to have a desired therapeutic effect which is what actually enough reading this is like i said i have to agree terrifying this is just i've told you before this is terrifying and this is terrifying this is what these uh, gates type gavi type people are doing here they're making the software of life didn't ask you and the government officials are going to make it mandatory because somebody at the who who's a snake oil salesman and worse a death dealer says so and they get that license because some rule was promulgated locally that says that all your local officials can just sit on their thumbs and watch the disaster. In fact, oh, maybe they'll get kudos for being able to talk how well they're fighting the, the, the COVID Zilla. So I had a problem getting into that last website last night. I've had some problems here and there. It's possibly on my end, possibly a router. So I gave you another link you'll see in the broadcaster. The mRNA operating system is, is discussed by Nature of Healing website. Uh, they go through uh, and explain this from SARS-CoV-2. And I wanted to point out why I pointed this out to remind us. The new SARS-CoV-2 injection is not immuniz an immunization. And they explain the next paragraph. The next statement is the new SARS-CoV-2 injection is not a vaccine. And then they explain that. And so they go through and dis dis dismantle this idea that you're dealing with something normal. And they actually call it a Trojan horse with an unwelcome gift. And remember, when you're doing genetic engineering, there's always, 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 underline always in bold, always, folks, unintended consequences. They just don't know. They need to do certain things, but they never get around to really worrying about that they will. They'll get this emergency authorization. Another website I found, uh, the Duran 
talking to the same fact it's not a vaccine, mRNA COVID vax chemical pathogen production device. How many broadcasts have I told you brought people other than myself, health officials that would speak out that said this is a, a biological weapon against you? And so I don't want to read it, just a title, just a reminder. This is what the stakes are here. And uh, we talked before, and I got some emails, some information on some more data dump information that pulled together some things confirming what I've said. Too much to go through on the, on the website, and too, I don't have enough time yet to analyze so quickly when I get it what I would like to extract from it. But it does repeat what I've told you before regarding all these corporations and your, your front-end things like Walgreens and Walmarts and things like that. Walmart partners with Commons Project. Commons Project is a thing. And Clear, which is not in capitalized, but that's that thing we talked about before that was running all your biometrics in through the TSA and the DHS. The Clear to launch digital COVID vaccine records because they're going to, uh, Walmart and uh, Sam's Club are going to empower the individual, going to empower the people, going to empower their customers with knowledge of their own health data. A third-party corporation running an intelligence scam through a fraud wants to look out for your welfare by allowing you to see your own data, uh, your own health data that they have to give you. And uh, it's interesting now I understand why companies have pharmacies. That's what they're doing it through. you got to go get your medicines from there. They can keep track. You know, it's one of the things I hadn't thought about. You know, you just think of pharmacy as a pharmacy. These people are thinking ahead of time. That's where you're going to be. The cattle will have to go to that pharmacy, and they get to keep all the records. In fact, that's a highly regulated industry, isn't it? And you're going to go there. You're going to go there, and you're going to get your stuff. And a lot of you will say no, and some of your, most of those folks are going to have to go to the store one day, and you're not going to be able to do what you need to do like we see John J. Singleton explain, lay out, your incident event and follow through with prosecuting the assault against you. Not a hand gets laid on you. Well, hopefully, and you won't do that for yourself. And so you'll lose that way as well. That or you don't, you don't go in. And partly I just avoid lots of places. Although the last few times I go out, I just happen to find it just right. I don't know. Maybe it's the look on my face or something. I, I don't know. I go in there with a smile like I do, just to happen to see the day, get out of the from behind the woodshed, and uh, I'm on to my day. Uh, now I see a bunch of masks. It's kind of creepy, but at any rate, it doesn't matter. Each one of us is going to have to meet certain demands or not, and uh, it's going to, the noose is tightening for your freedom. So the CDC just gave guidelines through uh, Walgreens, I think, that these that we're going to get to here. That it's hitting the news. They're going to get limited freedoms to those that take on the vaccine. That doesn't sound like property, controlling property now. I don't know, folks. It seems to be clear to me that that's what's going on. The Walmart partners with Commons Project and Clear. Clear, remember, we talked about all that. We talked about the data acquisition. And here it comes, the CDC granting vaccinated Americans limited freedoms. As MSM puts it, met with claims of government overreach. Now, my problem with that title is that's all it was. Social media responded by saying that was government overreach instead of taking the bull by the horns and denying it literally. Saying that as a notice that the CDC believes it can offer freedoms at all. And, I mean, there's plenty of people writing stuff about this on your Constitution and how they rationalize you know, the government and the Constitution and your rights and the Bill of Rights are li- are there to protect you. And all these articles, I have to laugh. None of these people that talk about it are actually protecting themselves. They don't have the first clue. And I don't say that as a judgment. This is a signpost of our demise. Everybody talks. No one actually does. No one understands how to approach it, and they're good. And I'll just tell you that you're looking at a, at a wall. You're looking at a wall to scale, find the end around, dig under, or whatever of an obstruction to all of that. And I've hold back on a couple of projects while I'm analyzing. Well, it wasn't really a surprise, but it is how formidable they have now become. These people in, in, in powers and seats of decision and denying any law. 
in working together to deny. It's like uh, judicial gaslighting. It's like corporate gaslighting against all of us. How well, you look at that and you see how well integrated this obstruction is. It's top to bottom. And so people who talk about their constitutional rights and the Bill of Rights and how wrong this CDC is to limit any freedom or have a right to say, they're right, but they're wrong. They're right because they shouldn't. They're wrong because they didn't work to stop and make a record for that not to actually see the light of day once they initiated it. They attempted it. I don't know what more to say. You can't really be quiet about this. Even if it's putting your thoughts together in a nice, tight form, objectively supported by the hopefully the law, and not just to talk about the Bill of Rights, but that the local officials, that the authority was not in the CDC, challenge them to produce their right to say so. Show them that they're not going to say that without it going to be challenged, and they're going to have far more work when a 1,000 people hit them with those and demand and follow through on that. And go after their jobs when they don't answer correctly. And don't apologize. And start getting, bringing them behind the woodshed in any numerous, innumerable ways as a society if we don't start doing this. What you see about transforming your society and your, now your body with Moderna software through a guy like Bill Gates, whose operating system, I'm, I wish I have two things I need to, to not be able to use in Windows, and I will walk away from Windows. What a, what a corruption that has become, a waste of life that Windows has become, what Bill Gates has always been the promoter of. And yet he's running the environment. He's running through Gavi. He's running an organized criminal syndicate. Oh, as I say that, the attorneys finally figure out these people are organized criminals. How long have you been hearing that behind the woodshed, thinking it was just some well, conspiracy theorist? No, no, just look at the information. Look at the evidence. It's right there. How do I say it's a, their criminal conspiracy? I go to the black and white for my locale. Wherever I'm at, I look at the look at for what criminal conspiracy is. I look at what crime means. I find the elements. I list them down, whether that's in my mind or in writing. And I say, here, they meet all the elephant, ele- elephants. elements. I now have a reason, at least a reasonable belief they're, they're committing a crime. I don't just say, oh, they're, they're criminals. Though there are these acts that you know generally, someone doing a robbing someone's purse, you can kind of, well, that must have been knowing intent. They don't need to say it that way. They're ripping off some woman's bag they don't have, a purse that they don't have right to. Okay, so I mean, there's some things you don't need to go through all this formal process, but when it comes down to actually doing something, it becomes more formalized because that's the record. The written record is everything is reduced to writing. I don't care where you're going to go if you want. Something objective to happen, you have to make it objective fact. Writings are how that's done. So until you start doing that, putting it down on fact, on paper, you're just uh, speaking to the breeze. You're just talking to the wind. And that wind can get howling so loud, you'll never be heard ever again. Limited freedom, says the CDC. Everyone's, uh, those that would have a say are screaming out against it. Not one of those people I've seen will move in the proper way, at least the way I see need to be proper, and until I'm told different, I'm going to have to hold on to this method, what I'm thinking about doing, because no one else seems to be doing anything, let alone making advances into it. Uh, but they, they know, they, we, everyone knows their Bill of Rights, and no one would lift a finger to actually exercise what they are. And here it comes. The same thing over and over, more news. It's like a repeat. It's the slow motion ooze is coming over this place, and it starts in certain areas. What started this, the most heinous murders going of, of our elderly, those that were supposed to be the vulnerable people. Yeah, they preyed on them and killed them. In New York, nation's first vaccine passport coming to New York. This is almost sounding like old news, but really what you're hearing before was the telegraphing and the notice, as I keep telling you the news is, of this showing up in earnest. The nation's first vaccine passport is coming to the Big Apple. What a bitter apple. Everyone's sleeping beauty over there, I guess, bit the apple already. The program dubbed the Excelsior Pass. Is Marvel Mystery Comics or something? What is where'd that word Excelsior? Excelsior Pass. These names is an app. Your digital chain is your phone. I keep telling you all this. Just read. The, how far do I have to go into the articles here? 
they're getting you the way that, that it was told that you would, they would get you. And you're all going to agree with it. I understand that in New York, through all this, they're going to make all this mandatory to the whole society. These transforming treatments called hidden under the word vaccine that nobody that has any knowledge about will call them a vaccine. They're experimental injections at best. Looking deeper, you find out they started out through the research of AIDS, which was invented, and it was really just a bunch of symptoms. And you could find, if you did the research, you find that these were preying on people with uh, excessive, if you will, excessive lifestyles that run themselves down, but didn't do well. And uh, that's what brought on all these symptoms of your body being run down. And they just took that, those symptoms and said, that's a thing. They just make it up. And they've been working now and then consistent with the oncology, which you go to cancer treatment, they're trying to kill cancer. And they try to, you know, what they point they try to kill you first. If they can survive, they try to get you right up to death, making lots of money the whole way. It's the same process. So now they got this injection, experimental injection that reprograms you to get, to create the vaccine, the AIDS the symptoms, so you can spread it around to the rest of the nation. So you then can come under the care of these profiteers. Anyway, at this point, the state's going to be right there to make sure that you get yours through this Excelsior Pass. It's an app that will allow New Yorkers to pr prove their vaccination status. To prove their vaccination status is a demand in the future. Or recent history of negative COVID tests. What is that, folks? And so there we are. There's your inside right there, the negative test. That gets you right back to what I've been telling you since March in earnest, in conviction that this is the process and the procedure you need to follow. Not telling you that there's people out there that are going to hurt you, showing you how they're hurting you and what to do about it behind the woodshed. That's been my thing. I want to point that out. You need to understand it. I'll tell you what, it doesn't, it's astonishing to me. When I, the more I talk about people doing stuff, the less people listen, want to listen, tune in, turn out. I see people stop promoting the website. I don't know whether I've ever said a lie, ever, ever. I don't think I've ever misdirected anyone. Now, I may have insulted a thought in your brain, but not intending to be an insult. And all of a sudden, people stop attending. They stop promoting. They, they stop syndicating. They stop uh, discussing. I stop getting emails. It's amazing. When it comes down to the brass tacks of everything, we have this thing in us. And I don't know, I can't stop, folks. I don't know what you're just what you're gonna get you're gonna get this out of me until I'm an either an Alan Watt or William Roberts or I'm William I don't remember his name now. Cooper, excuse me. I don't know why his name is so hard to remember. It's getting near the end for me, I guess, folks. Anyway, mentally I'm overdone at some level. So much going on, so little action going on. Folks, Again, here they're, they're, we're talking about this. They've been telling us they're coming about this. This has been going on for decades and decades. You'll hear that in that interview, too. You really need to listen to what that researcher was telling you. And you'll listen. If you've listened to me at any time, you'll realize everything I've told you has been accurate. No, I haven't found my perception to be wrong. And I've you know, worked real hard to make sure that it's correct. And all, I'm always open to correction. And, and I don't think it comes too much. Some of you have shown me. Not really a correction, just more information. You know, here's another nuance to this thing. And so I, I can't I appreciate that beyond measure because some of you doing the research is just I can keep tabs. I don't have to do that research. I can do the quick executive summary, if you will, confirm it, look for things that I may have missed, and then bring it to the fo the knowledge together. Keep bringing all that knowledge. Whether we use it or not is really up to the, the target. But it's not about knowing that it's happening. It's knowing what, how it's being done to you and what to start to do about it. And it is a starting. You just aren't going to do this. Here they are, the Excelsior Pass for your limited freedoms, folks. And it's a demand for your status or the recent history of your negative COVID test. You're going to have to be able to have a word in your mouth about all this. Similar to boarding a mobile air, airline boarding passes, individuals will be able will be able to either print out their pass or store it on their smartphones using the Excelsior Pass Wallet app, crypto wallet, folks. 
it's all going to integrate. Uh, these new, uh, this, uh, the news release explains each pass will have a secure QR code. So you're, you're not even, you're not even the name anymore, folks. If you get stuck on your name too much, that's behind the scenes. Now you just have a QR code. This funny picture. I hope you get, folks, remember, I, it's behind the woodshed now with Acme 3D View. If you hold your eyes just right, I bet if you look at that code, you hold your eyes just right, you'll see what's what the, what's in store for you. And as I say that, thank you, Daryl Miller. I haven't heard from you for a long time. Maybe I think it was last week you posted at the RLM YouTube account. Sorry, I didn't get to that. I just thought about when I was looking at it. I don't know why this triggers my mind this way, but you you made a comment. Uh, thank you for sharing the broadcast. I was wondering where you were, haven't seen you around. Like a lot of you over at the Sound Minds, uh, when Sound Minds uh, YouTube kind of blew up, I haven't been able to see where all everybody is and how everyone is and see what your comments might be. And so it's not that I forgot you. I just don't have a way to get at, at, at any information about you all. And uh, nobody, uh, not many people are easy to find. So this is how this works. But uh, Daryl, thanks for being there and thanks for sharing the broadcast. But back to this. So you get this QR code. You can't tell what it is. But I bet if you hold your eyes just right, you get behind the wood. You get the Acme 3D view now. You'll be able to see the harm that's coming upon you with that little QR code. Maybe someone can show me, tell me how they did with that. Uh, getting their eyes just right. Look really close at your screen, folks. Better yet, why don't you just get rid of your phone? How's that? We just stop that right now. Anyway, going on. It's happening, folks. The Excelsior Pass for limited freedoms. As the CDC is telegraphing ahead of time, notwithstanding the the vociferous objections to those that understand the Bill of Rights that will not lift a finger to assert any bit of it. Corona calls, as, as we go now into all that, it, we have a, cor, a, cor, a coroner, a cor, coroner, corona, coroner, how do I even say that? Coroner calls. This is a, supposed to be a really important office. The coroner calls for the audit as people who recovered nine months ago counted as COVID deaths. So as the promoters are bringing all this along, you're now getting evidence that people who are at least have a little bit of a conscience, and we've heard this before, but a new coroner steps up to question whether or not and how you can be death, considered death, and be a recovered nine months later shows you the booking entries that are being done contrary to reality and under whose instance. And I don't know who gave this guy a conscience or how he all of a sudden developed the conscience to say, well, I have a question, but my Monroe County coroner, Bob Hill, is making waves. It's making waves, folks. I said, how long has it been? I tell you, you got to get on your, your surfboard and you have to surf that tsunami of corruption that we're, is heading our way. So he's making waves. No, he's not. He's actually getting on the surfboard. They've made the tsunami to destroy your life. He's making waves. See, they point the finger at him, but he's not really doing more than saying, wait a minute. There's a falsity here. And as soon as you talk about a falsity, see, the rest of society says, I embrace fraud. Then you're going to walk, you're going to walk into this. It's going to be, a, to me, it's astonishing. I know it's there, but it's just, I guess watching it is just astonishing. How do you, how do you do that? How do you stand there and stand stare at someone square in the face and commit the fraud and, and have no other face. It's like playing poker. You have no other facial expression than to continue to play a bad hand. That's some nerve. That's some audacity. That's some criminality. Mon Monroe County Coroner Bill Hill, Bob Hill, excuse me, Mr. Hill, is making waves in his home state of Illinois, Illinois, this week, after he examined a portion of a list of the COVID, uh, possible possible COVID-19 deaths, what he found was utterly shocking and has led to calls for an audit of the COVID-19 deaths in his state. I'm not going to go through more of the same. While you're finding evidence of people who finally step in and look at the problem, um, like the attorneys, the lawyers, who are looking at the problem for the first time, well, I've heard of public-private partnerships, but these people are organized criminals. Well, yeah, you get a guy behind the woodshed, you'd have seen that. I mean, for decades, not just because of COVID. And this is the thing about those of you that have been listening to me. You know I've been consistent on all this and being the watcher, if you will, being the witness of it and trying to not just witness, but witness to you at the broadcast, but then to move for, forward and actually take steps to work out how we try to get back. And I'm, I mean, I don't see it. I'm hoping that people 
agree that they we want to get back to something where we do have that bill of rights we do have some we do have justice but i know everyone laughs when you hear that but listen if we don't have that we are well we're not living in a government so stop saying the government's doing anything you're living in a tyranny and you're not stopping it and so the coroner finally comes up same story all the wrong stuff why you get back to the coroner because the coroner is that local official and so there's another avenue to find out how they cook the books in order to promote the harm and the fraud upon us. There'll be another another direction. So the truth is out there, folks. It's out there. I guess there's a program about that. The truth is out there. Only this is not science fiction. You just have to roll up your sleeves and decide to go through and do something to protect yourself. As someone else tried to, and uh, in Virginia, and this came, uh, th- th- this, I can't remember how I found this, but for those of you that would fight, here's how that you do it, but maybe not necessarily how to do it quite right, but it shows a principle I, I wanted to explain to you through this report and story. Virginia, in Virginia, l- listen up over there, restaurateur who ignored a mask mandate beats government in court. We'll keep doors open. And this is big news. The word opens in capital letters on this story. What the big, why it's big news is pretty astonishing to me at one level. But it's going to show you something. It's really not the right answer. But it shows you what happens when you assert an action against the oppression. And this is just done apparently through an equity injunction. And I, and I'll interject here before I get moving through quickly here. I believe, had it been imposed instead of, an, now he was, this gentleman was suing for his business in the closure. And I haven't seen the complaint or anything. I'm just looking at the news story and just anticipating what the words I see are. Had this been a habeas, the court would have had to have released him on the same reasons. And the, and the reasons are not one that you prove. It's showing what I've been telling you. The burden is actually on the government which they are coming in to say they have and deny any duty. So this Virginia case shows for any state that is out there that is saying they can make it up as they go and they don't have a standard. This little decision here, the victory is in, it denounces any state authority from saying they have no burden or duty. Just as I've been telling you that the standard is that you have to focus on and they will try to evade. And they do a, they do a bang up job, folks, to do that. Fredericksburg, Virginia restaurant owner who scrapped a state mask mandate has defeated the North Thumb administration in court, successfully defending both his business and the freedom of choice after refusing to back down amidst health department efforts to shutter his business. Judge Ricardo Rigual denied the state's request to force the immediate and permanent closure of the gourmet restaurant, writing that the state, quote, listen carefully here, writing that the state, quote, has failed to clearly demonstrate the factors necessary to grant a temporary injunction, close quote. Nor... Has it demonstrated that Gormeltz poses any actual threat to the general public? While the case may be brought, yet be brought to trial, the restaurant's doors will stay open in the meantime, dealing a strong blow to the efforts of the Northam's administration's shutdown agents. Let's go back to the two points. I told you the duty is on the government. The burden is on the government. This is the first case, even though the attorneys brought it wrongly, and you should be able to know why they brought it wrongly. It's why this case continues. It was an injunction, the temporary injunction the state was asking for against the, against the, the owner didn't fly because the state didn't meet its burdens, which was to demonstrate on two points. Not for the owner to do it, but the the state. 
It has fairly, failed to clearly demonstrate, demonstrate, what did I say? That you have to demonstrate, what I said, the demonstrable exigency before you can pull police power to demonstrate the factors necessary to grant a temporary injunction for this thing to go on. The, gov- the business did not assert that it's been a fraud. So th- that means it can go on, which is the failure of this. However, you see the standard in this case. The government tried to come in and say, "You got it. We got to. Sh- we're going to. We have the power to shut you down." The judge says, "Not so fast. You have to demonstrate why you have that power to even make the claim to do so, and then within the context of that subject matter, you have to show what, folks. The state has to show that the individual, if I can use that word, the man or woman, or even the business." poses a threat to the general public is the conforming of the state's the local public health officials duties and obligations to the communicable disease law that does what receives the first complaint from a medical professional that there's a potentially listed communicable disease that that is taken by that public health official and then the study has gone on to further confirm that it is on the list of communicable disease and then they demonstrate that that's the fact and then they identify that to the individual on the report and then they make an order for the so-called individual the contagious principle okay that's how it's supposed to go this court in Virginia just said that said it in two sentences didn't identify the underlying reasons but that's what that says i'll read it again so you hear it you have to hear this i guess you have to know you have the power you have to know that there's at least a judge out there somewhere that even though they didn't look at the fraud and the attorneys were right probably officially probably wrong to not expose that they committed the fraud by the state and there'll be some more complaints that should maybe even should be written there if you had a bunch of people that could do it uh, this the burden is not a slam dunk for the government as i've told you when you get a judge that imposes the law that is before them, on the case before them, they explain what the law ought to be. They explain what the burdens are to be. And it says clearly, I'm not saying, oh, this is why I'm, I'm pointing this out because, oh, it shows me right. It's not just that. It's that when I read those words, I'm telling you there's an objective basis for it. It's not because I think so. I need to make sure that people understand that. Don't think I'm saying it from my opinion. I'm looking at what that judge said and says, okay, where did he get that? How, how could he come to that decision? And that my mind triggers on over to what? The first one would be the demonstrable exigency for police power. The second one, what is the subject matter of the uh, expressed, uh, professed emergency? And what's the, the power of in that subject matter, in this case, communicable disease is con- is containing containing the communicable disease, typically originating from a man or a woman that has it, the contagious principle, as we can find in another state in another term. So this is not, oh, well, these guys did the right, this judge found it, hooray, this is us. There is a basis for why this judge said this, and this is the only judge I've seen say this. If you think about that. And so this, this, that's the big deal here. Not that the store remains open, that the judge actually said the state has the burden, not you, my, my dear listener. And the state has a burden, a secondary burden, to show you're the problem that can infect the public. Let me read it again. It's so important. Virginia, judge, states, on a state coming in and want to shut down a business, The state has failed to clearly demonstrate. That word clearly is an immense word as I just read reread it here. It took me three times to find it. I don't know how that word clearly is is the big word right there. The state has failed to clearly demonstrate the factors necessary to grant a temporary injunction, nor has it demonstrated that the Gormelts poses this is the restaurant now, not the man. Gormelts, the company, the business, poses any actual threat to the general public perfect folks that's it that's your power this was a habeas and they didn't do that and they had him under lock 
I don't see how this judge couldn't have freed that man. To show you the same application, but in a different way. There's the standard. The state has to demonstrate, has the burden uh, to demonstrate the, demonstra- the, the exigency, demonstrate the exigency, the cause for the police power, and then they have to identify the specificity within that power. In this case, communicable disease. Okay, repeated, repeated, repeated. Maybe you turned away. I don't know, folks. This is the point right here. This is what you have not been seeing across the country. No, in California, you say, oh, well, they haven't, the state hasn't shown that it increases the hospital beds. It's irrelevant until they show that they can demonstrate the factors necessary to invoke the police powers, the state fails. None of you should be locked down. None of you. That's what I tell you. Write your letter, folks. Am I going to have to say, do I have to extend this? You write your letter. Have you, have you had a first report? No, if they don't have a first report, that impliedly means there wasn't a report against you. Subsequently, I've said maybe it's best to maybe write two reports. You could have one's a public response back that there's no reports, but then you want maybe the private one in case you get to the court that says that you particularly, your name has not been brought up as a contagious principle. Maybe that's a secondary uh, notice. So you start the general, and then you get the private. And then you assert that you've never been found to be what? an actual threat to the public, and the government knows that, is this case right here. That it's going to go on, that's a problem of of what they asserted. That's saying that there was a potential the state had a threat, had an ability to come up with, demonstrate a necessary factor. And if that was answered actually to say that's a fraud, that there's no way to come up with that, now we're looking at a different thing that equity would have to say, once the fraud is asserted, they now have to answer against it. Whether or not in Virginia before this judge, they will do what they've done in other cases around the country to work with the judge to allow fraud in the case and to continue and delay. I don't know. But here's your case, folks. Here's this two standards I've been telling you that relying on your communicable disease uh, statute for your locale is what the standard is on the state, not you. You have nothing to prove. What you do have to show for your own defense would be that they they don't have what they're claiming generally. And I and that's done just so that you get rid of that question, and you can. So go ahead and, so I say, go ahead and do that, because you can. It's like an anticipatory defense that you don't have to say. You just say, judge, I mean, they don't have nothing here. They're wielding power they have no ju- no justification for. So thank you to this judge for just having those two points. Whether they continue the case, I'm not so happy with, but that's not my case, not my, uh, not my argument. But you need to hear the most important point there. It's the state's burden to demonstrate the necessity and then that, that you are the particular cause for that necessity or part cause, as it might be, as we start working it out through an epidemic. But they never got an outbreak, did they? No, they got a suggestion through the United States government from foreigner in China, who now comes out and says, well, that's the issue. We never isolated a thing here, folks. That's not us. We're not doing any of this. And yet, with all that story, they've been able to get you in lockdown and hold you locked down for over a year now. And uh, here, nary a peep from all the uh, spring chickens, nor, nor the Easter bunnies, and all their eggs. Not even now, not even a year, and yet it's right here. And so, hopefully, 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 you'll see. I'm not whistling Dixie. Now, the South should rise again, but I'm not whistling Dixie behind a woodshed. There are standards. We're an occupied people that those standards are being blown by, but that's because more people aren't stepping up. One more company did somehow and this judge identified how he, he escaped the normal uh, idea that inhabited this the, the bar association the members globally which we hear a few more over there in germany questioning wow i didn't know that this was going to be like this good hearts believing that what the profession they were in did good not realizing it was it's the hub of corruption its influences are everywhere it's how you promulgate the rules we challenge 
for Reformation. All of a sudden turns out through one of their own to say, but well, there is a standard. And it's not on the people, it's on the state. And so that implies, if you we'll go over here quickly to the Tennessee case. The Tennessee case has been delayed. That's the same answer, but you don't see that, you see delay. But the officials there are saying that there is not any duty that they have, that the Virginia judge just said, you have to demonstrate the exigency, and then you have to find this is the one that caused it. Before you can uh, avoid what you're trying to do. And so, I don't know what more to do to point out these are not my opinions. There's a standard. If we apply them, that I said you're on the right side of history on this thing. And, and so we need to necessarily stand up because what they're going to do, they're going to make it very difficult for you to not be transformed into that new future they've been saying they're going to transform this the world into. The future we want did not include what you wanted. It certainly can't do it when your genes are being transcribed and transfected into some software from a company that's been designed by the likes of Bill Gates who can't build the software to save his life. Well, he doesn't intend to save your life. He intends to profit from it. Under the color of philanthropist, under the color of NGO, under the color of uh, international body, under the color of helping the children, under the color of working to save lives. The same guy that goes to Ted and says, I got a carbon answer, and it's to get rid of all the carbon units. Reduce the population of carbon units to zero, and we've solved the equation for global warming. Pretty fascinating what people put up with. And so all this technology is being rolled out, mandatory uh, passes, uh, COVID passes, whatever you want to call them. The, your local stores, anything with a big corporate name is going to have control of data. They're going to empower their customers. How, that, how you do that, I don't know. I guess maybe just to go buy food. They're going to threaten you with your life because you don't have a digital identity. And a lot of that technology has been coming from a little pipsqueak country uh, that we hear. I don't understand the influence. This is the other thing. I, some of this I don't understand how the influences are made. How, how people just, uh, the, people have to be this abjectly corrupt to even allow it, not question it. But we find in different little spots how this thing works out and how integrated it is. That it's not just a joke. That these people are really formidable and how they can come at, uh, against us. And I found something here in, in one of the things I I advocate to understand is we've been underneath this military control. It doesn't look like it. it's a spaghetti western false front. They make you think there's a civil society that's controlled by civil authority when if you look behind the paperwork, uh, the historical paperwork, you realize that the civil war ended in an occupation of the federal military over our lives. And a lot of people don't understand that. I think it's nuts. What you can call it conspiracy theory. Just go. I've done all the research. I've told it to you. We've read all the documents that proved that, that the Civil War never ended, and that every state was put underneath a military district. That the, inside this next story speaks a bit to that. Biden spokesperson Jen Psaki. Pisac, is that P silent? Saki. I guess. I guess it is, huh? Like Pfizer and pharmaceutical uh, worked for Israeli spy firm. So it's like the whole state of Israel seems to be a spy firm, but all their technology is state-of-the-art. They want to bring it in. The people have take it on. That really wasn't even the story, except that it's connected to the Israelis, and it's your digital technology. It's their phones. It's their track-and-trace stuff is working here. But Biden spokeswoman Jen Psaki worked for Israeli spy firm, and I go down and I read the first paragraph, and it said, President Joe Biden's press secretary, Jen Psaki, or Saki, if the peace silent, worked for an Israeli firm accused of involvement of surveillance of Palestinians under Israeli military occupation. I read that and I said, now what stops them from helping the United States advance the military occupation of the people of the United States? They're willing to do surveillance on the, as a military occupation of the Palestinians, 
actually, when you look at the United States, we don't know we've got a border around us and we're living in a really small spot that's under complete surveillance by the very same technology underneath a military occupation. And this is the spokeswoman for the president. It's not a far reach and far jump to get to the fact that the military occupation is being aided by the very same people and technologies. It's already agreed to. This is another state snake oil salesman. This is just another pres uh, promoter in the press secretary. As we hear, DHS preparing to use private contractors to scour public data and social media to, pile, to compile dissent citizens for watch lists and no-fly lists. Of all the news I've been reading, the Israeli companies that do this, the private contractors, the public-private co uh, partnerships, are the ones that are more fo most f capable and formidable and being used, actually have contracts for implementing this military occupation over your life that was ramped up in 9-11 to make all of y'all enemy combatants, which now locked in tighter medical martial law through covid which brings on your ability, the only ability to walk around was that you're going to have to have these Kobe passes, all made with likely with technology coming out of Israel as a military occupier. And now they're going to look at your social media, as it was all predicted, they would tell us to scour the public data for social media to compile dissent citizen and watch lists and no fly lists. You just all of a sudden show up on a list and you can't go do something is going to be tied to your whether or not you've had the vaccine. They're going to find out, again, as they said, coming into this year, whether or not they deem you, they deem you to be the terrorist, and you won't even know that. Just on what you're saying, there is no freedom of speech either. All that, to me, correlated why Pisaki worked for Israeli military occupation source and surveillance and electronics, and now the DHS is preparing for private the contractors, I won't doubt the majority of them will be Israeli government, uh, Israeli government uh, uh, businesses. And or as they do, the corporations, shell corporations, to hide the fact. It, it's pretty fascinating. It's right here, folks. This is a global military operation. I also want to wonder about Russia. I guess I'll go back to the Gavi thing. How, how is Russia even involved? You think they were separate this this antagonism between the United States and Russia, but they seem to co coalesce at the point of vaccines. How? Well, one of the funding mechanisms for vaccine for Gavi, which is one of the many types of ways that they get re money from uh, countries, the imp diplomatic immunities that they've got in international relationships, intergovernmental, non-governmental organizations. That they are. Russia is one of the found is one of the sponsors for one of the sub programs that included on the other end, as far as the amount of giving for that foundation for that uh, use, that contribution was Italy. Strikingly, Gavi, Italy supporting a, a program in Gavi, and they were the country which the worst. They took the brunt of their people getting hurt. Fascinating. It's a company that's supposed to stop, or an organization supposed to stop that, and yet they have the highest in one of their sponsors. But Russia is in that list, not the top, which is the United States, on the gen, on the general funding of that of that uh, criminal organization. But Russia is part of a smaller funding source, and so there now we tied now we tied why because I can understand why Russia was even involved at all with this fraud. Well, they're in on it, folks. There, there's no country that's out of it. Everybody's working for their own best position within the context of medical exploitation. For the governments, it has to do with all the control. I can see where Russia would like, from what we're told, I know maybe it's a prejudice uh, that I sh shouldn't have, but I think I can I study the place a little bit. I have my own interpretation. I wouldn't. That's, it looks attractive what Putin does. I wouldn't move there. Notwithstanding all the trouble we have in the United States, the property laws are horrendous back there. Like they are in most other, other places. Which I have a singular view about how they are different in the United States, which I don't think many people really embrace. First thing I get out of their mouth, that why do you pay taxes? Isn't taxes rent? All that, all this nonsense. You know, you got just got to get to the foundation. But 
Russia would like to have that uh, threat on their people, I would think, as a government. Any government would. A government is force, folks. Just, just take Washington's. It's like fire, okay? And there it is. It's just force. And the, and the United States, the people of the United States had the ability to check and balance all that and multiple checks and balances, which have been pretty well worked through by these invaders because they worked on things you don't know about you. It's like the Protocols of Elders of Zion finding, and when I read and understood it, finally explained to me I, there was things in the world I just didn't know, and there was people that knew that and could exploit that in me. And I looked around and said, well, that's like everybody. And if it's not like everybody, then it's the ones that are making actions against me are the ones who know that. And so I started to take a different position. I started to accept the humility of, I'm not so smart, and there's people that know me, and I'm going to, and I don't know how they're going to exploit me. I better be a lot more cautious. And I can put up checks and balances for myself to figure out what that is. Well, that's led me into how I think, how I look at stuff, how I try to look far away to see how the, that someone's coming that shouldn't be, and what I might try to do to make it more difficult for them or warn them off or whatever it might be. A lot of times it's not so, not such a big deal. Sometimes it's a little bit more engaged. But if you don't, they end up at your door knocking on your door and become a stakeholder. That's another thing you're going to find out. A lot of this is using these stakeholders. The Gavi, they call themselves stakeholders. I told you that's Genghis Khan at your door with his horde asking you for a cup of tea and a couple of other demands. And this is Klaus Genghis Khan Schwab, the head of the Reset Group, transforming your world. Same people. Stakeholders. I've talked all about this. 1985, that guru, that academic guru came out and explained it. At least to me, I was how I was able to identify it. They defined these things. And that's where I was able to tie in that stalking horse idea. I've talked to you about years and years back, talking about all the setup, how they're doing this, and be cut, and then be analyzing that and learning how to take them down. That they're doing it, but how they're doing and then how to interfere with that. Identify the stocking horse, and then I know I'm not going to be fooled by it for sure. I'm certainly not going to stand around while they're taking their pot shots. Okay, so DHS, military is coming right after us. Right after we find out that the secretary's, uh, the White House's secretary, press secretary, working with the main electronic surveillance country in the whole of the world. It's it's it really is so scary. It's scary because it's so integrated right in front of our face, and we don't really respond. I don't and I don't get that. I really don't get that. Anyway, so I could harp and lose that, but I'm hoping some of you keep stepping up. Some of you are follow. Don't listen, folks. You can't wait to learn enough. You'll learn so much more, so much faster, just by writing simple letters, keeping your head on your shoulder, and watch what's going on. Moving it through, yes, you're certainly going to get resistance. Anybody that's a criminal is going to try and sweet talk you first. Try to persuade you so you look away and let them go on their business. Yeah, that's always going to happen. These are all natural laws. I mean, I don't why people, oh, I, I sub, you know, I'm natural law, I'm a, a proponent of natural law. Then they, then you get upset and complain about people using the nat- natural law to, to take you out. This is a, they say dog eat dog world. And I think we give a lot of lip service to a lot of that. And these people are out there. And this uh, this interview with this, going back to the uh, WHO researcher, this the interview just explains the inner workings of one organization working to influence the public-private partnership with government. Happens to be what she says is a corrupt government. Makes sense. To literally have singular people controlling the world. All based on agreement, to the point that the question is asked: Are they they are immune from prosecution? Well, I don't know. We have to look at that. We still have a problem in the United States. We have judges that claim to be immune from prosecution. Where that all came from, well, how we allow that is uh, quite quite a thing, quite a thing. And the main protector of that is one organization, which. Is the same people that in, in the video in the interview say that they're coming to save us, 
And here we're, we're all, what, eight months after, and I don't hear, see any Savior, and this thing should have happened in 14 days. Folks, this is an equity action. It should have happened. Fraud should have been ended within a couple of weeks. It actually, if you look at federal, United States federal law time, an injunction when they, the other side doesn't answer in two days, you could actually get it in three days or five, depending on another thing. If you look, read very carefully. Does that ever happen? Is the tale of the tape of the injustice you allow? Because most of everybody doesn't even have the first first clue, first is clue. All right, so I don't know what more you know. I can, like I said, there, there's witnesses here. We we're coming and we're going. Again, my condolences to Alan Watt. Didn't have any indication he was supposed to go. He's now a witness, not there. And I'm wondering if that's because to witness who's out there doing the harms is we're now past that, and we're in the time you better you better respond. And it, I guess little things can happen to cause dynamics and pull at geopolitical things. I want to move on from that into something else that's kind of interesting. Some of you 420 folks might find this a little bit interesting. I'm not sure of the actual dynamic here, but this is what happens when the government starts to relieve its oppression of people and let people do their thing and I guess do their thing to the limit that you don't harm others boy would an attorney be able to open up what harming others is but anyway just what the general sense is you don't mess with people you don't harm them you do your things without interference we're not talking about Karens or Kevins or whatever the heck those folks are that triggered at everything that they think you don't like well, let's get to, get to some a little bit of reality, a bit about how life works. When the government lifts up, uh, lifts an oppression, it causes it's a ripple. It causes its own tsunami for those that are trying to build foundations against free being free. Mexico's imminent marijuana legalization law leaves United States lawmakers holding the joint. Four year. What's this about? Well, four years now, dozens of pro-marijuana activists have gathered in front of Mexico's congressional building on Reforma Avenue in the largest city in the Americas to spark up and tacitly remind lawmakers of a landmark 2012 ruling by the country's Supreme Court that declared a ban on recreational marijuana to be unconstitutional. Reported on that behind the woodshed. Well, they've been diligently showing up every day at their country, at their, at, in their government, at their uh, congressional building, and over all that time, they finally got the legislation they want. The legislation that they've got is expected to pass easily in the Senate and to be signed into law by President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador in short order, nearly four years after Mexico's legalization of medical marijuana. So this is a long-term government run slow, but it runs and continues to run. And this act will eventually, because of the dynamic of the hemp and all the other stuff, it's going to put pressure on the United States government just by doing that. Uh, something that was declared back in an article I have in 2000 and, and, and 2001, the drug war is the new Jim Crow. The drug war is a new Jim Crow. And this is going to relieve this whole thing where the government put all you all, as I told you, that confined everybody into freed slaves underneath your civil rights, which is the right to pay exactions of every kind and no other. Title 42, Section 1981, before any of you think I'm talking racist or whatever, it's the law. The new Jim Crow was discussed by the ACLU in 2001 that Mexico, by what it's going to do, is going to start to put pressure to up, upend that. By what? Government not being an oppressor. And that took people pressing hard and diligently and for a long until, until folks, until it was done. That this is what the behind, getting behind the woodshed is about. Until. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallivingmedia.com. What you do for the archives and all that, I'll get the broadcast broadcaster up in a few hours. It takes a while to do all this. And uh, everyone that's syndicating and posting and mirroring the broadcast, thank you very much. Appreciate all that you all do in the comments and everything. I appreciate to see those. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.